Danny Flexen for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by top promoter, uh, Kamosa AG, chief boxing officer, to give him his full illustrious title, Kala How are you doing? You got that one just right. You got that one just right, Danny. How are you, mate? You well? I, I Googled it about five minutes ago. <laughs> I heard you injured your foot in training, so uh, <laughs> I've been well, packing up pounds. Yeah, well, they they're drop they were dropping off until the foot injury, and then I've had to knock it on the head for this week after Tuesday, but hopefully back on it for next week. Good, 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 you're, good. You're my inspiration. Your brother tells me you're always in the gym. Yeah, I'm... Uh... I do a lot of time in the gym, yeah. I do do a lot of time in the gym. My weekly routine is a sort of 5 a.m. session. And then if I've got time, I'll do a, a, another one at, around late afternoon as well. So, yeah, and that's when I'm not traveling. And when I am traveling, especially with jet legs, I'm normally in the gym at weird times, very weird times. I find it helps me sleep. So, all good. good. You're, you're good. an inspiration to us all. Horses for courses. Exciting That's, times, lockdown, yeah, yeah. lockdown. I'm not going to say lockdown's over because it could easily oh, come back. But... It's almost there, isn't it? It's yeah. almost. And in two weeks' time, we finally got the WBSS Cruiserweight final um, between Absolutely. Maris Breedis and Unil Dortikos. Do you yeah, tell I mean, us about some of the, the challenges that have led to this point? I thought we only wanted to do a quick one today, Danny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where does it start? I mean, you know... It's the first major, um, major international event following coronavirus. You can talk to me about that. a lot of other ones. I know White Pavetkin was a great fight, but this is a world title fight between the number one and number two in the division. So it's it's a different different league of event, and it and on top of that, the difference is you couldn't chop and change. You know, you have got two guys they qualified via semi-finals, quarter-finals. Uh, those are the finalists. You can't say. I will do Breedis uh, in Napier uh, and we'll bring in a, a European opponent. You can't do Dorticos in Miami and, and bring in another finalist from the, from the States. So it's the first time you're going to have the Americans and the Europeans clashing, so to speak, on September 26th. Um, well, you know, so I think that's the biggest part. You know, we had to, we had to see how you get someone in at the moment. It sounds... Uh, Sounds almost like you're smuggling something into prison. Uh, but, it, you know, it has been locked down, so we're not far off prison. And, um, yeah, it's just been it's been crazy, that part there. And, you know, uh, Andreas Benz, the CEO of Camosa and his team in, in Switzerland, they've been very, very busy throughout lockdown doing that. And um, that's, they've done a great job, great job in uh, in actually getting getting the, the, the health and safety part just right, we feel, as, as right as you can get it. Yeah, following the guidelines, and um, now I'm I'm just just can't wait to see. The, 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 I think I, I was so excited for this final beforehand, but I think now, you know, it's it's, uh, it's time for um, time for action. You know, looking for very forward to it. With it not being in Latvia, without that kind of rabid pro breedist crowd, does that level the playing field even more than it was already? Um. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, Dortikos, he, uh, he's fought in Latvia before. Okay, you'd say not against a Latvian, but, you know, he's travelled all over. I don't think that really bothers him too much. You know, he had a great fight against Kasiev in Russia. Uh, that didn't make any difference if it was in Russia or not. I, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, that level of professionalism, you, you, it's not like it's his first big fight. You know, Dortikos has been in many big fights before. A lot in the WBSS and um, Breedis as well. So I don't think they're really, I don't think they're too bored about it. What's going to be quite interesting, both are obviously out of, you know, they've both got, especially Doors Girls have come from that Cuban system. He's going to be used to fighting without a crowd um, from, that, from that, that sort of time. Breedis as well came, came very much from a kickboxing background. Um, fought, fought a lot of his careers to this sort of breakout fight when he knocked out the current heavyweight champ, Manuel Char, um, went on to beat Marco Hawk uh, in, in Germany. So, you know, both of them have, have fought parts of their careers, you know, developing without without crowds or smaller crowds. And, you know, I, I, I think it'll be a, bit, a little bit back to the roots for them. For Myers, obviously, is very used to now having these big, very loud crowds in, uh, in Riga. But to, but to, to be fair, Dortikos has fought 
you know, huge fights in the WBSS in front of massive crowds, often against him. Um, uh, you know, like it was against Kasiev in the, in the semi final last year. And um, I think that if you look at it from that point of view, um, I don't think these guys are going to let that affect them either way. I think, you know, they're both forward coming fighters, not defensive, um, south for fireworks. It's, I just can't see it going. Going the full distance because I think both guys uh, both pack a punch, and um, let's put it this way: their their atta their attack is their defense. So it's, it's set up for the fans, you know. It's uh, hopefully it's going to be somewhere near the other two finals we've had this season, and you know we feel a mile away now after lockdown. Yeah, and the memories, but yeah, and good ones. We're the same season, but you know it's what it is this year. Everything's a bit different, and. Um, we're just delighted to be the, the first out the blocks with the, with the big event, you know, so very happy about that. With the absence of the revenue generated from a live gate, how have you managed to make this work commercially? Is it testament to the TV network setup that you've got? It, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's testing times for everyone and everyone's going to have their own solutions on certain events, you know. Um, I've got to say uh, credit to to. to you know, sort of Gillian White, uh, Eddie Hearn and Povetkin for, for getting that show on somehow because I thought that was very much relied uh, rely on a live gate. I've heard it did very good numbers on UK TV, which is great for the, the whole industry to hear. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's certain events that are going to be more difficult to put on, which rely more on the crowd and others that rely more on television, you know. So we're going to give all the secrets away of how we've managed <laughs> Yeah, but we have, and we got a fight, and uh, let's uh, let's all enjoy that. What's the knock-on effect for the next season of the WBSS? You probably don't even want to think about it at the moment, having still got this oh, event. But well, Danny, I've just come off lockdown, mate. <laughs> I can't think of much else? Uh, no, we're, we're you know we were raring to go before. It's no secret we were we were going to announce just just before the last final, or just after the last final, when it was planned in March. That, of course. Is, is what we've thrown on its head. Um, you know, you, you look at, let's say, my role, which is always to look at the weight classes, the fighters, those get put into a strategy, they get put in front of a board, that board decides. Um, so, you know, I'm not completely back to the drawing board because obviously the weight classes haven't changed, but, they're, but the dynamic of the weight classes have changed. There's other ones that have suddenly become a little bit more interesting, you know. Um, Pick out the middleweights, for example. Um, you know, so you know, Mike Povetkin showed again the interest in a non um, non Fury Joshua uh, heavyweight one. You know, so certainly on the list again. Um, you know, so we've expanded it a bit, but you know, how has it affected it most? Well, you know, with, with the timelines affected, <laughs> that's the biggest one. But um, you know we're 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 preparing for early 20, uh, 2021. Um, how the, in which construct that is, and you know, is it going to be the full tournament with the quarterfinals? Is it going to be one weight class, or three weight classes, or two or four, um, or is it going to be um, is it going to be behind closed doors? Not um, those things. They're not down to. Uh, um, myself or anyone at uh, Kamosa or uh, anyone in, in sport. Unfortunately, they're up there with the gods and, the, and then partly the politicians. So we're in safe hands, eh, Danny? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Um, let me ask very, you... Very sarcastic is a Friday, though. I'll, I'll grant myself a moment of sarcasm. Let, let me ask you this. If there were no promotional barriers, broadcaster barriers, anything like that, current boxing landscape what would be your dream wbss field which division and which fighters are you talking realistic or can i just no, no, dream absolutely anything who's a current fighter. Yeah, you've got to say the one division that cap that's capturing everyone at the moment is the heavyweights you know you just got to go on that and you'd obviously have number one c fury two c joshua you got that paired up and you know the, the six behind this is not the best heavyweight division ever. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And I'm sure Danny, you've been boxing long enough to know that <laughs> himself. But but what's exciting is it's competitive. You know, it's a competitive division again. 
um, all the way down to 12, 13, 14 in the, uh, let's say, the, the, the list of, of fighters on there, you know. Um, just look at it, you know, behind there. You know, you've even forgotten about a guy like Ruiz who can get knocked out the number two seed not so long ago. Um, um, you know, it, 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 it's a deep, deep division. You know, uh, it's a deep, deep division. But, you know, I think, I think there are other ones. I mean, we picked the Bantams last season. People at the beginning were like, oh, Bantams, okay. Insiders said, well, wow, that's a good choice. Yeah. But there were a lot of people saying, oh, we've gone from, you know, marquee UK names like Groves, Eubank, Callum Smith, you know. And uh, now we've got uh, uh, the, li the little guys at Bantam. Well, hmm. You know, uh, the, I think uh, I think I think we can only be praised for that one. Um, you, you've got to pick out weights that can shock, but but have those fifty-fifty matchups. You know, so there's no point in you know doing a WBSS in a weight class where you sign up one star in the division and get seven you know seven donkeys for a knockout. You know. That's all her to knock out. Maybe we'll look at the females, you know. Uh, so you need, you need, it's not about, you know, it's not about having that one star. The star gets created through the tournament, you know, through the through the fights. You know, Inui, yeah, he was, you know, he, he, was, a, he was a good name for, for, especially for the hardcore, but for, for, the, for the mainstream, Inui wasn't there yet, you know, and, and through the tournament, you know, you know. I remember the first fight, first quarter final, was in a was in a ten thousand seater, about an hour from Tokyo. Um, the final was, you know, was in front of twenty two thousand in Tokyo, nine million people watching live in the Tokyo region alone. You, know, you just saw this, this, and, and that is testament to the guys who step step up, uh, step up to the plate and uh, and are prepared to do that at that at that level. I'm going to take you back to the heavyweight one you were just talking about. So you had Joshua right. Fury, Ruiz yeah. you mentioned. Presumably Wilder would have to be no there. You've got Ruiz Wilder. Um, that's four. Presumably you yeah. use some of your sway to get Hergovic involved. Uh, yeah, but that's almost at seven and eight, isn't it? Because you've got to really go white per Vic. Or maybe you put, do that as an eliminator. You know, now oh, I'm playing when it gets in the field, field, yeah. But, um, but yeah, one of those fills it. So you, then you've got, well, you got You've got five filled, so you've got three to pick. You've got Joyce Dubois as an eliminator, yeah, one of them. Then you've got Hergovic, of course, uh, number, at, at, at seven. Then you've got uh, one more to pick them now, isn't it? You know? Pulev, a Jagba. Ah, uh, Pulev, I think it's over the hill, but, but a Jagba. Uh, a Jagba, for example. That's a bit of uh, shade there. Just just throw, yeah. the, throw away comment. <laughs> No, no. He lives over the hill. I, I, I know he's my mate, and I promoted him. Yeah. For a long time. I do, I do think wish him well. I wish him the payday. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, okay, the lightning strikes in heavyweight division, but uh, uh, yeah, it's got to strike pretty hard. For, for some, <laughs> and, uh, maybe strike him on the way into the ring or something. Yeah, so, yeah. that might be the only chance. But, but yeah. okay, so. You talked earlier about Dillian White against Povetkin. Just tell us what you felt, thought about the whole fight camp concept, having now watched it. Because I think we spoke to you before it launched. Yeah. What I mean, I, it I, in... I can't say, you know, I've got, I've got to be totally honest, it was the only one I watched out of fight camp. I, I, mean, so I watched a bit back in here and, and I saw I got very good, very good reviews on it. And, yeah. uh, and I, I think, listen, credit to, to the, the whole matchroom team for doing that. Credit to all the other promoters who've gone out and, and, and done it because it is easy to sit there and, and not do anything and just wait. Yeah, there's you know there is that option as well. For, um, but I think they, I think to be honest, it was it, it, it looked terrific. For you must forget what you're dealing with. You know, I mean, you know, we, we've we're we're now doing it in a film studio in uh, near Munich, which is the, probably the, probably the most technically advanced studio probably in the world uh, outside of Hollywood maybe um, but they produce crazy things there and that, that's why we picked it also because Germany's sort of, well that's the situation is at, in our opinion uh, most under control throughout the pandemic um, but uh, go, go match it I, I thought it looked fantastic I thought the 
I was I was I was worried for Barry and Eddie that the house might go up when the fireworks <laughs> went on. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. A, I thought the fireworks were great. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen them after the fight instead of before the fight. Uh, and listen, um, a fantastic job, uh, well delivered, and um, I guess in a way it was almost a breath of fresh air from the other ones who've been doing it in the studios. You know, so it was sort of like it was outdoors. I don't know. I watched it. I just, as I said, I just watched the White Prevetkin fight there. Um, I didn't watch the other cards. Maybe I would have got bored after four weeks of watching them. Eddie's Garden, but uh, but it was no fantastic idea. Um, I did tell him recently I had the same idea <laughs> a few weeks earlier, but he did not did it, you know. Well, so credit to him. He um, he, he definitely fought outside the box on it, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cracker. It well, was a cracker, I thought, in terms of freshening things up without people. You know, it's, it is difficult, you know. Um, you know, I thought... I thought you might sneak a few people in there. So you can't do that at the moment, though. So it's uh, it is um, it's tough, but it looked it looked great. Yeah, it looked great from a production point of view. Um, I think the fight with Povetkin, um, I wasn't surprised. I think just Dillian's been rolling fifty fifties the last three four fights, um, or at least the Rivas, the Parker, missing one. Um, we're all 50-50s. Rebels Park and another one as well. It was 350-50s. two, I suppose. Yeah, that wasn't for me. I think I think he would have thought felt himself the favourite to go into that, despite the fact I thought Dell won the first fight. But um, you know, uh, I think he would have put that down to an off night and, and thought he would have had the run at Dell. So can't can't really blame that. that, that. But to, if you're going to roll the dice at 50-50 three times, you know, it, it says a lot about Dillian White. You know, it, it does say a lot about Dillian White. It shows a true fighter. Um, I got a feel feel for him being in that position that long and, and rolling the dice. And, you know, what people got to understand is that I'd be the first as a promoter to say, Sock that. I said, you're sitting, you're parked until you get the shot. Yeah. But it's also his a career in boxing isn't long and, and, and he's at his peak. And... He's developed very, very well as a fighter over the, over the years. And, and uh, if, even if you look at first Joshua fight, look at the, the first uh, the first Joshua fight. I'm assuming there'll be a second one one day. Um, but look at the first uh, the first uh, Chisora fight. Uh, um, the first uh, yeah, the first Chisora fight. The first Chisora fight, and look at the improvements that he's always put in. And um, I just think that you know. <laughs> He, he was off of pay-per-view dates, very difficult to turn down, you know, very difficult to turn down. So I can see it, uh, you know, he'll be kicking himself, but you roll the dice 50-50 three times and one time you're going to get that, you're going to get the wrong end of the coin, aren't you, you know? Over this whole lockdown period, what, if anything, would you say you've learned about boxing that perhaps you didn't know before? I think that, you know, I, I do feel a sense of community and I'm not talking about Frank and Eddie having lunch. Uh, Which I, hasn't happened yet, incidentally. No, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't got access to either of them diaries, but uh, I wouldn't mind being a fly at the wall on that lunch. Yeah, old and evil with the camera. But. Yeah, on the wall of that lunch, that could be quite a ticket. Um, but, I, but at the same time, I, I, I think that a lot of people spoke who maybe wouldn't normally talk in boxing I'm talking about promoter wise and found solutions for when you're coming out of lockdown you know how can I help you how can you help me because you are better off at the moment especially when you're putting shows on to see how you can work with other promoters you know um, I saw my brother um, in, in Germany, they worked together with uh, another promoter to put on this uh, Jack Coulthard versus a Bas Barou fight recently. Um, Very good I mean, fight. It was a great fight. I thought, it was a, I thought a Bass won it three, four rounds. I thought it was a bit of a robbery, but it was a great fight from both guys. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look at it. Great cracking fight. But that came out of a lockdown situation, you know? So I think you're going to see... You know, what, so what did I learn? I learned that there is sometimes a sense of community. I mean, we'll all end up probably getting the knives out next week, but you know, <laughs> it, it was nice. It was nice while it lasted in that it's sense. Peace time. Yeah, it's peace time. So yeah, I mean, you know, and I, but I, I think from a, on, a, on a personal point of view, 
spent a lot of time with my son, um, which I don't normally get to do. So uh, that was... How old is he now? He's 12 now. So it was a blessing, um, real blessing for me, um, like that, just to... Yeah, it was frustrating, but to spend time and, and, and ripping my hair out, like most of it, what's left of it, but most of it, um, like doing homeschooling, you know, who would know the word homeschooling at the beginning of this year when we were all celebrating New Year's Eve? Have you, you taken know? the lead in that, that score or has it been your, your wife? No, no, I, 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 my son goes to an English school, so I, I take I take care of his, his, um, his, uh, his schooling, but... Ah, I was like Googling, you know, uh, equations and I, I, thought, oh, I thought 20 years ago, I thought I'd seen the back end of that, but, you know, it's made it horrible. I'd sleep this night thinking about algebra. So, yeah, I, I think from a personal point of view, it was, it was that family thing, you know, I, was, I saw my mum a lot, you know, which I don't see too much either, so it was very nice to reconnect, um, obviously in a safe environment. Yeah. Uh, we all to be careful on that. Uh, yeah, so, watching, yeah. yeah, so, so, uh, yeah, no, I think those are the main ones from a business and a personal point of view. And I think, and I, I, I do feel that that's probably echoed by a lot of people, you know. Great stuff. Well, it's good to see your enthusiasm is undimmed or maybe sli- slightly dimmed, but it still is. there, you know. No, it's one. raring to go, Dan. It's yeah, raring to go. Trust yeah. me, trust me, trust me. That's that is one thing I've learned about. The other thing I learned or, or felt through lockdown is, oh, the, the feeling of being caged up, you know, it is, uh, whoa, oh, that freedom thing, now, nah, you know. If you haven't done a stretch, then you know, you know, now, no, uh, you know, you know what, what freedom means. Eh? Something uh, to look forward to, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no, you appreciate the little things. I remember, you know, having your first pub pint again, you know. Oh, yeah, we yeah. all had a good drink during lockdown, I'm sure, but. Having that first pint in the pub, you know, uh, tastes different, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better, especially well, after I don't want to go through this again, though, to have that feeling again. Do you know what I mean? No, 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 no. It's good. As good as it was. <laughs> yeah. We all do a self-imposed lockdown every couple of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a famine, but it's not really a famine, you know, where you starve yourself. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Right. Great stuff. Dan, Best of luck in two weeks. Up, and, Over um, and out. I'll see and, uh, you soon. Take care. Cheers, Danny. See nice you. one. Bye-bye.